Hello, my name is Claude Sunir, and today we're going to talk about globalization and free trade. As many of you might know that trade is happening all around the world. Having said that, trade is not happening fairly. That's one of the topics we will be discussing in this video. The World Trade Organization is an organization that focuses on providing equal and fair trade for all, and reshaping the world's living standards that will benefit every single one. Trade can lead to prosperity. It will light a compromise we have to make sure that trade operates fairly and distributes widely. If there wasn't any restrictions put into place, the powerful and wealthy countries make bargains that wouldn't benefit the developing countries around the world. Restrictions are so important so we can prevent one country from controlling the world's economy. Free trade will help prevent powerful nations like the United States from controlling the world market. The World Trade Organization has put many restrictions on businesses, especially on agriculture related fields. Dumping was a huge issue in the world. If you look at the corn industry in the United States, for example, in previous years they had produced so much corn that the value of corn had dropped. What these farmers tried to do was drop their prices and sell for an incredibly low price, but all wasn't profitable. This would have a negative effect on other countries' corn industries because consumers would then demand a cheaper item. Since corn producers are price takers, the World Trade Organization put restrictions on dumping so countries wouldn't be allowed to do this business method and allow other farmers around the world to still benefit and make profit from their crop. Dumping isn't the only issue we face in world trade, there are many other issues we face in the world trade today. In case you didn't know, the chocolate industry is barely profitable for the farmers. The producer of the good is paid only a single euro per one kilo of cocoa. This produces about 42 large chocolate bars with a value of 3.5 euros per bar, which is equivalent to 147 euros per cocoa bag. Due to this, these farmers have found a method where they still find where they still benefit and profit from farming cocoa beans. The method they use is child labor. Are we such a proud nation of supporting child labor? I certainly are not. We are responsible for these actions because countries like the United States, Belgium, Switzerland, and Germany manufacture the good in their own country, and they decide to pay them a significantly low price for cocoa beans so they can sell their chocolate for cheap. Don't blame a country like Ivory Coast for using child labor. Blame yourself for buying a cheap chocolate bar that was on sale at your local grocery store. If you want to keep turning the, their cocoa beans into chocolate bars, pay their farmers more. Or later on, Ivory Coast will start producing their own chocolate bars, which I believe should occur so Ivory Coast can finally become a more developed country and create employment, or find a way to work together in this industry. To have a better understanding of this topic, I'm going to show you a quick video of the cocoa industry. Everyone loves chocolate. Three million tons of it are consumed every year, half of it in Europe. But the success of chocolate has a dark side. While first world kids are enjoying the sweet taste, reality is rather different for Africa's children. According to a wide range of organizations, the chocolate industry is accused of covering up the trafficking of children and the use of child labor on the cocoa plantations. We have decided to investigate these allegations. But the truth can be dangerous. We will go undercover with hidden cameras and assumed identities. Is it true that young children work as slaves in the chocolate industry? Our first stop is Mali. Children are said to be smuggled from Mali to the cocoa plantations on the Ivory Coast. The largest chocolate manufacturers signed an agreement in 2001. It's called the Harkin Engel Protocol. It states that child labor and the trafficking of children are prohibited in the cocoa industry after 2008. We have arrived in Mali, one of the world's poorest countries. A country with little or no export.
Yuxiao says the children are bused to the border town of Segua, and from there they are smuggled across the border. Since 2003, Idrissa Kante has tried to stop trafficking of children. He has statistics of the children he has rescued from trafficking. The girl says she's 12, but Yushao thinks she's younger. She was promised work in Bouquet, an area with many cocoa plantations. Abidjan houses the head offices of the largest chocolate manufacturers. Here we find Nestle, Cargill, ADM, and Barry Calibor, who all have their head offices here with several hundred employees. 42% of the world's cocoa production come from the Ivory Coast. Together, these companies buy almost the entire production. It all starts at a cocoa plantation. The cocoa pods are harvested and the beans are dried in the sun. Then the cocoa beans are bought by intermediaries at one euro a kilo. They sell them to national exporters. The beans are then washed, packed and sold. Now the price is two and a half euros a kilo. From the stock exchange, the cocoa is sold on to the chocolate companies. The companies turn them into cocoa powder or cocoa butter. The chocolate manufacturers make chocolate. A kilo of cocoa at one euro for the farmer becomes 40 chocolate bars. <laughs> We come across four little boys and a man. They all come from Burkina Faso. They don't seem to be on vacation. The plantation worker says the children are aged 10 to 12. None of the children goes to school or can speak the local language. According to international labor laws, this is illegal. A child from Burkina Faso can be bought for 230 euros. And that's without haggling. The price includes transport, an indefinite use of the child. Most children never get paid. The industry will not accept responsibility for these conditions. We won't give up. We will make an extra effort to make Nestle the largest food company See our film. Free trade can bring a lot of positivity into the world. We can learn from different countries, but we have to work together to make this happen. The World Trade Organization has given each country a single role to influence and make decisions for the world in the trade industry. Two-thirds two of the country have to agree to put something in place. Kenya being a strong developed country only has a single vote. Similar to a developing country like Thailand has a single vote as well. This indicates that wealth doesn't have an influence in this organization, even though their main focus is on money and trading with different countries. Free trade is an amazing thing because we are capable of learning new business methods 
educate ourselves in new lifestyles, try out new things that we weren't able to do before. Here's a short clip of a few places around the world. Tariff is a tax imposed on a part of when it's imported into a country. So tariffs may be uh, leveled on a particular potential value or a specific uh, dollar amount per weight. And the purpose of a tariff is to protect local produced merchandise and to raise government revenues. There is also non-tariff barriers and as a method used to protect domestic industry. And instead of putting a high tariff on it, they have different restrictions. So there's milk quotas where you can only buy milk from your own country and there's also special safety labeling and other pro things like promoting buying locally and stuff. There are so many things that we can talk about in the World Trade Organization thing and also about this international trade in general. I am only mentioning a few things in this video because I can go on and on forever. The credit crunch was one of the things that happened is the credit crunch was when banks allowed uh, businesses to borrow a lot of money and also single individuals. The only issue was that people weren't able to pay it back. Another thing that is also commonly mentioned in international trade is about war because war usually can either create a lot of benefits for the economy for certain countries but can also bring a lot of negativity into the world and future violence and maybe certain countries wouldn't want to trade with certain countries. So it's important that the World Trade Organization steps in so that people will be comfortable with each other again to be able to trade and let both countries actually better benefit economically. It has a huge influence in international trade. It can either make a business have financial struggles or have so many sales that they can't even keep up with their orders. The media is involved in advertising businesses and also to show what businesses are doing wrong. Gab is an example that made some bad choices or of providing unsafe work conditions and child labor. The media pointed out this which made Gap have dropped in their sales and apologizing for their behavior. Media can also promote business like Key River millions of dollars are being lent out to small independent business who need to who need a loan but aren't able to get one through an ordinary bank. If there's such great recognition in the media millions of dollars are now being lent out to people in need, making Kiva a greater success. Showing this, media has a great influence in international trade and can either make or break a business. Thank you for watching my short intro on globalization and free trade. Hopefully you learn a few things that will make you make better choices in life. There's a lot more things I can talk about, but I think this kind of covers the basics of globalization and free trade. Thank you for watching.